Hey guys, Matt Sardo here, Monkeys Fighting Robots. We need to talk about Green Arrow number two because this might be my favorite series of 2023. It's pretty spectacular. Green Arrow number two from DC Comics comes out today, Tuesday, because they have new comic day on Tuesday. But that's a whole nother conversation. We're not even gonna do that right now. We're not we're gonna stay focused. Stay focused with me. Uh this this book is um bonkers good. I read the first, I read issue one. And then issue two together as a whole. And I was like, oh my God, give me issue three right now. I need issue three right now because the way it ends, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for it to all go down. All right, so let's talk about this. We have uh, the books written by Joshua Williamson. The art is by Sean Isaacs. The colors are by Romulo Fajardo Jr. Uh, letters are by Troy Petery. Man, um, I, have to, I have to give a huge... Shout out to Sean Isaacs because you know what that guy does? He put how to pronounce his name right giant in his Twitter handle bio. Uh, you don't know how hard I struggle to get everybody's name right. And now that comic books are international with talent, I mean, they always were, but like there's a huge hotbed of artists from all over the world. And, and I want to do my best to make sure I pronounce everybody's name correctly. And, uh, Sean knocks it out of the park. Go give that guy a follow on Twitter. And, uh, thank you so much, Sean, for making my life a lot easier. Okay. So after I got done reading the book, I just wrote down my quick reactions to it. And let's see what I got. I got, I got fast paced. It's an over the top superhero tale. Uh, Roy, Arsenal, Green Arrow, Oliver Queen, they are on two sides. Like the universe is here. The universe is here. You have, you have, uh, Roy over here and you got Oliver here and they're fighting to get to a point. And I think this is the point right here where the book explodes and the universe like goes crazy. And I don't know when that's going to happen in the book. It could be. In issue three, it could be in issue 25. I don't know how long the mystery is going to unfold, but that's really engaging to me. Then, like, I don't know what the mystery is yet. I, I kind of know, like, I'm here and you're there and we're trying to get to each other kind of thing. Um, but how it's going to unfold and how it's going to get ex explained to me, the reader, and how it's all going to work out and how the Oliver Queen universe of family characters is going to bounce around. Uh, my brain is just boggled with the possibilities of how crazy it could be. I really like the cosmic element of Oliver um, being wherever he is. Uh, it's funny what he said. I'm stranded out here in sector 8675309. Something like that. I don't know. That's, that's Hal's whole thing. Now I have to Google it. I am a complete idiot. That's 86753309. That is a song. I just got trolled by Joshua. I was like, oh man, I wonder what universe, what, where they are, where they are in the universe. Like, where is he? Oh man, I just think, yeah. Okay, so you got me. You got me. I'm an idiot. I just rolled right into that. I was... I was going down the wormhole of like, what sector of the DC universe is this? And you, you just, I just called Jenny. I just called Jenny. Ah, you guys, I'm trying to do a serious comic book commentary critique and my head's in a different space. Ah, man. I wrote down on my piece of paper that the jokes write themselves about Green Arrow being in the cosmic universe because one, he's throwing arrows at space aliens who have lasers. Two, everybody's going to think he's the Green Lantern and he's not. And that's what they do in issue two. Like it's, it's lots of jokes and a lot of witty banter. And uh, I can definitely see why putting... Oliver in the cosmic universe makes a lot of sense from a writing standpoint because you have 
a lot to pull from just with the character being as snarky as he is and his association with early DC and how just, you know, Green Arrow, just very simplistic, like, I am a dude who shoots as an archer. Like, it just the simplistic nature of Green Arrow and the corniness of the character, like, that stuff can can kind of organically flow out in a cosmic universe. The fast-paced nature of the book is awesome. I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to say it's awesome a lot because you have these different characters and that you feel like you always get a piece of each storyline and you get enough where you're like, okay, I don't feel left out or I don't feel like anything's getting jibbed. But then when the book ends, you're like, oh shit, I want more. And I, 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 I think this dual conversation that's going on in the book lends to that fast paced element because you're never really on one character very long. And then the book is action packed to begin with. Like I'm like, I'm like all amped up. Like if you look at me, I'm like, I'm amped up after reading this book. And that, and that's, that's an amazing sign to come out of a book and just be like jazzed and ready to rock and roll. And then the end of this end of issue two, I'm like, Oh, I'm ready to fight. I'm going to fight somebody now. Like, and it's going to be amazing. Like, I'm, you know, so I, I, that's, that's a combination of being a well-written book and then a well, well-illustrated book and having pop colors that pop and lettering that's easy to follow. And that's I'm just pops in my head now when we're talking about lettering. Like Oliver is narrating this book. And it doesn't matter what's going on. Arsenal can do something and, and Oliver is like chiming in or Oliver is just doing his thing and he's just, you know, talking in his head. So you have this like green, it's not a word balloon, it's not a thought bubble, but you have like a green box with his narration in it and it's nice yellow letters and it has uh, a white shadow underneath it. So it stands out very well and it guides your eye through the page. So everything's making you move and guide through. But also this narration is a conversation between Oliver and I. Like we, Oliver and I are going on this adventure together. And it's, don't take that for granted. Like there's books you read and you're like, you're watching the action and you see things happen. And you're like, Yay, Spider-Man. Yay, Superman. Hey, Batman. Woo. And you're like following their adventure. But the way this is written, I'm part of the adventure. Like I'm in it. I'm in this book because Oliver is talking to me the whole time. And it's amazing. Like it's, it's, I'm, I'm so engaged with this book. I, damn, it's so good. It's so good. All right. So, I'm going to take a panel. Um, I don't know exactly what page. It's maybe the, the fourth page, and it's a nice splash page. I'm going to pop it up on the screen, and we're just going to talk about it because it's a nice double-page spread, and I can kind of do like a mini panel breakdown with it as we're talking. And so looking at this page, one, it's got everybody's names on it, so I know who to give credit to. Two... It's laid out perfectly for rule of thirds. You have Oliver on the top left-hand side. He just engages your eye. You have this nice bright cross that leads you to the chase. Also, small thing, but it means a lot. The perspective of the world in this scene is slightly tilted. You don't get it that much because there's a downward, there's another panel right below it that kind of blocks off the angle, but it's, it's there. And so this angle adds to the movement. You also have the, you have the movement lines of, that are there to begin with, and then you have this bright thing, but everything is leaning and you're sliding down to the right of the page. There, there's so much movement in this and like you are, you can feel that movement. 
you have this nice triangle between Oliver and the alien that leads you down to the page. So your, your, your brain is just moving. And then you come back and you follow the narration as the action unfolds. And since these panels are cut, it adds more action and more movement to it because one, you see how infinite the universe is and you see how cosmic of the city is. But Oliver is overlapping these panels. Like, so he comes out at you. Like you, you're, it's 3D almost. You feel, you want to go and try to touch Oliver. And then the way the panels kind of compress as they bend towards the page turn, your brain just automatically kind of fans it out. And then you're following Oliver's narration as well, which leads to Oliver pointing an arrow at you. And you have like a sideways S through the bottom panels and it circles back to you. And then your finger is like right next to Oliver's bow as you turn the page. You're like, oh, who, how, who's going to get shot? So Sean just knocks this double page spread out of the park. Like it just, it's beautiful. Like I'm looking at the, um, I'm looking at Oliver jumping through the panels. But then you have the lights in the back behind the alien. And that has a nice angle to it. To where you also feel some movement from there. And then you have the crash tackle through the glass. And that glass, one, the alien and Oliver are coming through to the next panel. And then a glass is coming through. And then you have him you have him over top of the bow and arrow. Hmm. I wonder what Eric Larson would have to say about this overlapping arrow. Like, would you, or, or the bow, the staff of the bow and arrow. I wonder if you would put, if there's a version where... Oliver and the alien are underneath the bow, but the breaking glass is up top. So you're still coming into the panel, but the main emphasis is on this final panel of Oliver shooting the arrow. That would be interesting. I wanted to see how that, how that would work. Sean, if you're listening, feel free to talk to me about that one. And then Romulo, his colors just really pop it's cosmic so everything's bright i it's it's amazing what they can do with digital colors these days and i do like how they give oliver the neon cosmic power suit like he doesn't have cosmic powers but he's in space so you give him the neon green lantern thing going on there and you have his like laser bow everything kind of just pops and all that neon just looking at you're like oh this dude's in space like I would, you know, this there it is definitely in space. But this is where it like gets crazy. You're like, oh my god, like, why is Oliver in space? This double page spread is just the tip of the iceberg of why this book is amazing. But I wanted to take time and talk about it because this is a prime example of why this book kicks ass. Are you reading Green Arrow? Did you read the first issue? Like, what did you think of it? Like, I read that and I was like, oh. And then I read this one. I was like, I can't even, I'm out of breath. I'm out of breath. I can't even do it. So, uh, comment below on what your thoughts are on where Oliver is in the world right now or the universe. Uh, let me know what you thought of the first issue. Uh, when you grab this issue today, because my review is going to drop the same day you get the book, like, let me know what you think of that as well. Um, what, where do you think this series is going to go? Like, again, I have no clue where it's going to go. I'm just super excited I have a ticket on the bus that's going to take me on the ride. Like that's that's where I am with this one. So um, Green Arrow right now is a must buy for me. I, that, that's what I'm saying. So um, if you just go buy it and check it out. And uh, yeah, take care, guys.